Silent motivation. So we know for sure that Jesus believes in respecting mothers. We know that the Old Testament teaches us that it is the only uh, commandment with promise is that if you honor your father and your mother, God said, I'll add years to your life. That alone ought to make it worth it. That alone. I don't care what they did. I don't care what they said. I don't care what you went through. I don't care whether you knew them or not knew them. They brushed your teeth or didn't brush your teeth. If God says, I'll give you more life, if you treat your mom and your daddy good, you ought to shut your mouth. We know him as something to Jesus because while he was down on the cross, he stops and speaks to his mother. And yet when it comes to his mission, he does not allow his alliance with his mother to get in the way of his mission. Ye know not what you ask. What we are looking at is the difference between big picture, small picture thinking. Jesus has made a big picture statement to a small picture thinking person. I'm getting ready to die for the world. Can you give my kids the job? She cannot see the big picture for looking at the small frame. Sometimes you cannot talk the God kind of talk when you have a small picture approach to life. He's trying to redeem the world for generations to come and she's trying to make sure her already blessed, already exceptional, already acknowledged kids get some more. I wonder, is it really for the kids or is it for you? Big picture and small picture thinking crash in this text. She brings a small picture issue to a big picture God. And when she brings her small picture requests to a big picture God, he says, you know not what you ask. I know you worship me, but just because you worship me doesn't mean you understand me. Because you're talking, I'm talking about purpose and you're coming about position. By the way, can you handle what it takes to have that position? Do we sometimes ask God for things that if he gave them, we couldn't handle them? Is there ever a point that we should be contented with what he's already done? Or is it about more, more, more? Is there a point in your life that you should be satisfied? I don't mean not creative. I don't mean not grow. I don't mean not maximize it. I'm talking about is ambition killing you just just question is there a point that you should count your blessings and say lord i thank you because when there is a hole in your character nothing is ever enough nobody can love you enough nobody can tell you you're beautiful enough nobody can do enough for you it's never enough because whatever you're getting is leaking out through something in your life that stops you from saying, I'm thankful for what I have right now. Can I go a little bit deeper? Jesus said, what you are asking for is a promise that only comes through process. And then he starts to take her through the process. Can I show you one more thing? Just, just one more thing. I'm going to show you this process. Let me get this process. preach so I got on the wrong notes here we go he says I want you to understand something about this process 
I'm getting ready to go through some things. And when I go through things, it's going to escalate. He said, they're going to mock me. They're going to scourge me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to mock me. That's verbal. They're going to scourge me. That's beatings. They're going to crucify me. That's killing. Whenever God is getting ready to promote you, there will always be an escalation of trouble. I don't know who that was for, but it was worth coming through the rain to get. Whenever God is getting ready to promote you, there will always be an escalation of trouble. He said, they're going to mock me. They're going to scourge me. They're going to crucify me. He said, it's going to start out amongst my own people. Come on, somebody. It's going to start out amongst my own people. And he said, then they're going to turn me over to the Gentiles and it's going to get worse. Whenever the enemy knows you have a destiny, he will always send a distraction to stop you from getting to your destiny. And the distraction will always escalate before it gets better. They're going to mock me. They're going to scourge me. They're going to crucify me. Are you here? The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. It's always going to get worse before it gets better. You have to understand that when all of this is said and done, are you sure you can handle the process before you ask for the promise? Because I'm not going to let you sit in my seat until you suffered with me. Jesus says you cannot reign with me if you do not suffer with me. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I'm telling you to him who much is given, much is required. And before you ask for something, look in that cup. Because Jesus said, you're talking about the place you want to sit. And I'm talking about the cup I got to drink. Are you so focused on where you want to sit that you haven't looked at what you have to drink? to get there what amazed me with about the text is that Jesus tells this mama be careful what you ask for you are asking for your kids to die you, I can't put them in that position if they can't handle this cup and he says baptism. Let me break this baptism for you new Bible scholars. Baptism is about death. It's not about water. When Jesus says I have a baptism to be baptized with, he's not talking about water. He already came up out of the water. He's talking about what the water typified, which is the grave. And when he told them, you got to drink the cup and you got to go through the baptism, these dummies said, we got this. This text illustrates how we underestimate what it takes to get to the next level. That we are caught up in the allurement of who sits on the right and who sits on the left. But we have not looked in the cup nor inspected the cross, which is the path to the position. We want the promise without the problems. We want acknowledgement without agony. We want riches without work. Talk to me now. Talk to me now. Talk to me now. We, we, we want fame without loneliness. We want pleasure without pain. I'm sorry. You know not what you ask. Before you ask God for the chair, be sure you look in the cup. Because between you and the chair is always a cup. If you're willing to work hard, it doesn't matter who you are, or where you come from, or what you look like, or where you love. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white, or Hispanic, or Asian, or Native American, or young, or old, or rich, or poor. 
able, disabled, you can make it. Silent Motivation. How do you fight an idea? You can't sanction an idea. You can't go to the United Nations and have a meeting about an idea. You can't withhold funding or, or have a summit, G8 summit to fight an idea because ideas don't respect governments, laws, rules, treaties, or creeds. And then we went a little step further and we said, okay, we understand what terrorists look like. So we started watching for terrorists. And all of a sudden we had an idea of who would be a terrorist and what a terrorist looks like. And then the terrorists start changing colors. <laughs> because it is not an ethnicity that we are fighting. It is an idea. And I want to suggest to you this morning that as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. I wonder for a long time how come, how come we don't, uh, God does not require of us what he did of apostle, the apostles, the disciples, the early church. We're, we are not asked to lay our lives down, our lives down yet in such a way that we would have to be crucified upside. Love you, Daddy. Motivation at your fingertips.